All right. So the goals for today's session is to kind of establish a vision and goals for the PLC's work and add to last year's work. I'm assuming lots of people actually played around with equitable grading from what you did last year. So build on things you've already done and make a goal for where we go from here. Uh, we want to learn from each other's experience and discuss sort of our plan for next year. So we're going to start off with some introductions. Then we're going to talk a little introduction to what our plan is for the PLC and the sequence. And then talk about the understand the purpose of grading and sort of talk about some fundamentals around grading for equity. Although this does start with some of the work of Joe Feldman, we'll be going beyond that into other resources and other uh, major players in the field of equitable grading. So uh, we'll be giving different resources each time to help along with that. While you're here, uh, we'd like to have some standard norms. Uh, just be respectful to each other. There's gonna be in some breakout rooms. Uh, make sure that those are a safe place to try to uh, take time to think and share. When you're in there, you wanna critique people's uh, the ideas, not the people, uh, and provide res support and encouragement because we'll be doing like problems of, problems of practice and discussing other kind of sensitive things around grading. And so we wanna make sure that we're all respectful of each other. Uh, in terms of equity, make sure all ideas are valuable. So, you know, step up if you're not, if if you haven't spoken yet, step back and make space if you haven't, if you've been talking a lot and monitor your talking time. Encourage those we haven't heard from to speak and value the different ways of thinking and sharing, representing ideas. We all have things we can learn from each other. And finally, community. We're all here to learn together. Uh, so come prepared to work towards a common goal and think about your grading practices and your ideas around grading together. We're going to share our thinking, uh, ask questions, and listen carefully to what everyone has to say. And let's all try to work on building on the ideas of others. If we say things and you have uh, opinions or ideas to share that add to what we're talking about, please, please be feel free to share those as well. We'll be asking for input from you as well. This is a community, not just a Christy and Andrea show. So some of you um, may have been here, um, may have come last year to the PLC. I do recognize some names in our participant list. So if that's you, welcome back. Uh, love to see you back again. Um, one of the things that we realized when we were doing this PLC last year, it, it felt like every single meeting was too short. Like we had a lot more to say and we were out of time. And then the next meeting we were on to something else. And so it was, it was just a little bit more of a, a survey into some ideas. And so when we were talking about doing some planning for this year, we, we knew we wanted to do uh, equity, equitable grading again, but we wanted to give more time to each topic. So you may have noticed in the newsletter that each topic now has uh, two sessions. So we'll be talking about purpose of grading for two months, um, which is great because it really allows us to dig in a little bit more. Um, people really wanted to um, engage in conversations with each other and share experiences. And we were always felt like we were cutting that off, like, okay, we got to move on. And it was, it didn't feel good, honestly. So um, we're excited to uh, say that the PLC will run the entire year this year. Um, and again, each uh, each of our topics, we're going to be revisiting the same topics that we talked about last year, but we're just going to be spending twice as long on each topic. So um, if you were here last year, you can expect to see some, some new things and some deeper um, digging into topics. And if this is your first time with us, you will get to see both uh, the beginning and some further kind of digging in on topics. So um, wherever you are joining us in terms of like wherever you're at with equitable grading, um, you're welcome to be here. We're glad you're here and looking forward to hearing what each of you is bringing in terms of your experiences and ideas. Um, like I said earlier, this is a, a topic that I'm very passionate about. Um, it kind of revolutionized the way that I thought about 
kids and how they learn and um, my own practices as a teacher, um, it was it was a game changer for me. So uh, I love to engage in these conversations. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to, to all the things we're gonna talk about in this PLC. Um, one of the ways that this PLC is really uh, a really rich experience is the engagement that we have with each other when we're here. So I know we got a, off to a little bit of a rocky start um, this afternoon with the links and the, uh, all that stuff. We're, we'll be better. We'll be better next time, I promise you. Um, so put that aside for now. Um, and um, just know that when you're here for that 90 minutes, um, that's a great time to just turn off the TV and shut the door on the kids if you can. And like, this is your time. Um, and this is time for us to really uh, share and experience and listen. And um, we're all learners here. Absolutely. Every day, we're all learners. So um, to get the most out of it, it's really uh, the, the the quality of your engagement. And I know sometimes we're driving home and we're trying to engage in the conversation. We all have lives and we all have to do that. So totally understand that part. Um, but if you're able to really um, kind of separate yourself from other things and really um, engage fully in, in the 90 minutes, that is, that's the ideal. So um, Andrea already went through the norms and they're kind of represented here, but just if uh, I just wanted to put a, a little plug in for really um, investing in this engagement time, because that's that's where the good stuff is, right? That's where the real value is. Great, I'm ready, Andrea. Next slide. All right. I'm just, while you're talking, if I look to the side, it's because I have another computer over here. There was somebody who said that there was someone in the waiting room. So I'm just going to resend out the right link to people just in case they went to the right. wrong place. Go ahead. Uh, just heads up for anyone who's who's hearing from their counterparts that they're in the waiting room. There currently is no one in the waiting room. So it makes me wonder if they might be at the other link. So Andrea is going to send out uh, the correct link again. Um, and thank you for keeping on them uh, and encouraging them to get here. Uh, let's see. So we have uh, some introductions here that we would like to um, hear from you about who you are and where do you teach and what do you teach and what are you really hoping to get out of this PLC? Um, and then just for fun, where is the farthest place you've traveled from Oregon? Um, in the... Uh, so last time we had the PLC, there was a, uh, some feedback that people would really like to have a parking lot. And so there's a link at the bottom of the slide there for um, if you have any questions that we're not addressing or you have any kind of hot button issue that you want to make sure that we get to probably at the next meeting, we will look at the parking lot um, after each session. Um, and then uh, make sure that we address any questions or concerns that you have. So that's that's a great place to put in those like, oh, I wanna make sure this gets heard. Um, I think I looked at the, if we go to the next slide, uh, we're gonna notice they crossed off the word assignments here. So so last time we did some assignments and we're, we're just gonna go rogue today and we're going to do some um, random selection of um, assignments for breakout rooms, just so we can try to uh, mix it up a little bit. And you'll notice we'll be doing this um, throughout our PLC time together. We're not going to always stay in the same group. Um, we had kind of mixed feedback about that last time. Some people really wanted to work with the same people every time and others were like, hey, you know, I talk to my colleagues every day. I'm really interested in hearing from some other folks from other districts. So trying to mix it up each time just so we have that uh, variety in, um, in terms of experiences. Um, all right, so next slide. This is just a recap of what we're gonna do. So in a minute, we're gonna open some breakout uh, rooms and you're going to, when it's your turn, you're gonna talk about who you are and where you teach. Um, why did you sign up for this PLC and did you attend last year? And that's kind of on the same vein as what, what do you hope to get out of, of the PLC work? What's the furthest place you've traveled um, from Oregon? 
And then this one's not on the introduction sheet, but what's your biggest challenge in working in a group and working in a breakout room? So Andrea, I think we're gonna have people go to the doc first, have them do some, some independent um, typing in of the doc just so we can get some, um, some time for folks to think about their answers and then we'll come back together and then we'll go to the breakout room. So do you wanna go back a couple of slides to the um, link for the introductions? And then I will put, and just in case you don't have this open, I will put the link in Not the that. chat. And then uh, can you hop over please to the document and fill in information about you? And then when it looks like we're about wrapping up, we will come back together and we'll go to our breakout rooms. So I'm just gonna mute for a couple of minutes while you're filling out the document. Hey, Christy, uh, someone has asked if you could put the link in for the document again or the for the slides because they switched from a phone to a computer.
do you think, Andrea? It looks like we're about there. It does look like we're about there. And All I was right. about to say the same thing. I noticed that when I try to create breakout rooms, if I make six breakout rooms, that that gives everybody four people in their room, which is a good number. Um, right. And I'm just going to add a little like group six to our purpose of grading statements as well while I'm on that. Right. Event. That sounds good. Um, I'm seeing a lot of great um, just when I'm looking at the column for what do you hope to get out of the PLC? There's a lot of good stuff there. So uh, thank you for thank you for including what you're looking forward to, because that really helps us kind of get a get a frame of where folks are coming from. Um, I know I put in my box, I learn something new every time I engage with others in a conversation about these topics, literally every time. So looking forward to hearing your experiences, your questions, the things that you bring, because uh, we, we all benefit from that. Um, all right, Andrea, are we ready? We're ready. Breakout I'm going to go room. ahead and put, put people in breakout right. rooms. Um, we'll give yep, you a... So so remember, random distribution, and here's the here's the directions, A through E. Um, and we'll give you, what do you think, 10 minutes? That sounds great. Okay, 10 minutes it is. Andrea, I'm just going to pause the recording while we're in breakout recording. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had um, a good a good 10 minutes to introduce yourselves and um, meet some other folks and hear what they are uh, hear what they are interested in with this PLC. Um, all right, so before we start heading into the next piece, ooh, I see a lot of unmuted folks. Do you mind just taking a second, making sure that you're muted? That helps us with the noise control. Thank you so much, appreciate that. Um, Andrea, on the next slide, we have the PLC timeline. So you'll notice we're going all the way to June. So our first um, meeting today, of course, is our introduction, our purpose of grading, and kind of some foundational pieces for equitable grading. Um, we'll spend two sessions on that. Then we'll head into um, kind of a deep dive into rubrics. Uh, what are they? How do you use them? What are the different kinds? Um, and some opportunities to look at um, maybe some, some good rubrics and some not so good ways to make them better and our experiences with them. January and February, talking about motivating students. That is uh, a hot topic these days, post COVID. Um, so how are we re-engaging our kids in the learning? And what on earth does that have to do with equitable grading? Uh, March, April, we'll look at multiple opportunities, also a hot button topic. So excited to talk about that. How do we engage in multiple opportunities? Why do we engage in multiple opportunities? Um, and then finally, shifting the grading paradigm. What if you are all about standards-based grading, but the rest of your team at your school isn't, or don't, they don't know about it, or how can you start shifting the sands a little bit? Um, so those are some things that we're going to be talking about this year. So again, welcome. Glad you're here. Um, let's go to the next slide. Let's dig in. All right. So... One of the things that always comes up is why is grading so personal for teachers? And part of it comes back to what are the stories we tell ourselves and others about the grades in a grade book? Sometimes we sit around and we think about like, if I look at someone's, if I could take a peek at someone else's grade book and everybody has an A, I might have some opinions about what kind of teacher they are and what kind of, um, what kind of class they have. Versus like, if I look at someone's grade book, and I say, oh, look, half of the class is failing. There might be some things that come into my mind. When you look at someone else's gradebook and you see one of those things, what are some thoughts that you may have had around those ideas? If you see all A's or 
most people are failing. Just put a drop a couple things in the chat uh, about what you might 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 have crossed your mind at one time. Or if you're having trouble with the chat, you can unmute for a second and share that idea as well. Yeah, somebody might think it's too easy or too hard. That's definitely a thought. Not a focus, yeah, grading is not a focus. Some parts of us in the past sort of thought that the grades need to be on a bell curve and maybe we've got that changing. Or there's some thoughts about are people really challenging students? Are they showing completion? Are they showing proficiency? Is that really where things are at? Those are some, some thoughts that often come to a lot of people. So when they did a, a, an interview where they asked a bunch of teachers like, hey, what do these grades really mean? They interviewed about uh, like several hundred teachers and they said, what are the purpose of the grades? Like, where are these coming from? And they came up with six main ideas that often show up. They often show like, hey, they wanna communicate some achievement to parents, like they've learned this thing. They also say student self-evaluation. So students think how well are they doing in a class? Sometimes they're used to track students, to identify which students should take an AP class, which students should go take shop, right? Um, provide incentives for students. Some people feel like if you are making an F, that'll cause you to go through and try harder. Or if you're making a, an A, that'll cause you to keep going. Some people feel like it's a, a, to inform instructional decisions or to track effort or responsibility. Take a moment to look at these and think about um, where some of these ideas might contradict each other. People often find that maybe it's hard for students to self-evaluate if we're using it to track them on certain paths. And maybe that self-evaluation comes across even harder because they're like, I must not be whatever kind of person. And can we really communicate effort and achievement and motivation at the same time? Yeah, and that's a great comment in the chat of if it's feedback, but it's high stakes. Sometimes students don't wanna take risks because that affects their grades. There could be some incredibly bright students that decide, you know what? I wanna take the easy path because I want the A instead of doing that extra learning for sure. So think about, um, take a moment and we're gonna go and do this Jamboard together about what activities or aspects of your school are influenced by these grades? Why might they want to, just like Laura mentioned about the high stakes, why might they want to take the easy path and get the good grade um, because of the activities and aspects that are in, impacted by, by student grades? I'm gonna try to click on this Jamboard and share here. So go ahead and Christy, would you drop the link from the Jamboard in case people didn't get it? And do I just add in what activities or aspects of your school do you think are influenced by the students' grades? If you don't, if you haven't used the Jamboard in a while, you can just come over and add a sticky note and say, um, and hit a share and that'll go ahead and get something in there. And I'll add it to this other person's because those are the same sort of idea. And if you see some comment that's very similar to your comment, Go ahead and move your sticky note close to that comment so that you can kind of we can kind of group them by by ideas.
seeing lots of really good things on here about like definitely there's the things about athletics, but there's also a lot of like, hey, you might not be able to take your elective because that means you you need to be double blocked or get extra support. Or they might not be able to do social activities. There's definitely some comments in here about student self-esteem and recognition as well. Kind of how they're treated by their teachers is definitely a big one. All right, I'm going to move back to our slides. These are all great. These are all great. And now I want to think about your own personal experiences with grades. And we're just going to, we're going to, so think of some expense, ex your own examples of like when you felt, felt like a grade didn't really reflect your learning or when you felt like a grade wasn't fair or the timeline impeded your learning or was impossible to get what you wanted out of a grade, or you got a grade you didn't deserve. Think about that for a minute. And then we're gonna put you in a breakout, back into breakout rooms for a minute to kind of just talk with your folks about your personal disappointments with grades. All right, I'm gonna put you in this room for five minutes. Back with the same people you were with a minute ago. Let's talk about those disappointments with grades. Andrea, before you do that, let's do a quick check-in. Hey guys, how did you feel about 10 minutes for the introductions? Did you feel like that was too long? We felt rushed. We didn't, can someone drop something in the chat about that? I'm just trying to, to, I wonder, I wonder if five minutes is not enough time. Good. We could have done it in eight. It was a bit long. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's go. How about like seven minutes? Let's do seven. How about that, okay. Andrea? Let's do seven. Okay. That sounds fine. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the feedback. Appreciate it. I forgot to put these in there. I wonder if I could broadcast that. Are you taking them from the participant list and assigning them? All right, everyone, welcome back. Um, let me share my screen. All right, so wondering if you guys had some, uh, heard some interesting things in your breakout room about experiences with grading. Uh, when we went over the directions, my mind immediately went to a couple of examples from my own experience uh, as a student. Um, wondering if anyone wanted to share one, um, maybe of their own uh, experience with grading that sort of has maybe inspired you to be here today or inspired your your practices in your in your classroom. Anyone willing? Anyone interested? Oh, Amy, thank you. 
I just want, it's more like a pattern. A lot of us, I think we're kind of talking about like things that had to do with uh, unclear expectations, whether it was like we were putting a lot more work in and then everyone was getting a good grade, even if they didn't put as hard work in as us, or mm. um, whether it was like they were grading too harshly, but they couldn't explain why you were getting that grade. There's a, there's a lot of, pieces to what you just said. I love that. I mean, uh, my mind immediately went to rubrics when you when you talked about unclear expectations. That whole the whole piece of the moving target or the invisible target, like kids not knowing what they're aiming for, not, you know, haven't seen examples, don't don't know what the expectations are. Um as a student, it kind of leaves you out there like guessing, right? Guess what I'm thinking guess what I want to see on this assignment, right? So clarity, transparency, examples. Yes, all of those things. Thanks for sharing, Amy. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so looking forward here. Let's see if my, I'm going to do it. Okay, so earlier on uh, Jamboard slide one, we talked about what are some of the things that, um, direct students, uh, you know, direct students on a path um, when we're grading them. A lot of people put sports or extracurriculars, but also tracking like what course they can, they're allowed to take next based on their grades or their um, in, uh, extrinsic motivation uh, if they're, if they're being kind of celebrated for their grades, et cetera. So we're going to take that a little bit further and we're going to think about the purpose of grading for your district. Um, so can you take a minute and try to find, and it'd be interesting to see how, how deep do you have to dig to find this? What is the purpose of grading for your district? And paste it onto slide two of the Jamboard. Maybe, hopefully, somewhere your district talks about why we do grades. So could you share that? Or if it's too long, maybe just like a a summary of that, put it on slide two. Uh, I'll give you a, I'll give you a minute to do that. So here we are on slide two. I saw some folks were put some things on slide one. So slide two your district's current grading policy. Why do we do grades in your district?
Okay, great. I'm I'm fascinated by what I'm seeing, and I'm I'm just looking at the screen because that's where my Jamboard slide is. So sorry, I'm I'm with you. I'm just looking at another screen. Fascinated by some of the things on here. I I, I would be. I don't I don't know what I would think if a district reported on a website that the reason that they do grades is to track graduation rates. I mean, really, is that the reason? I mean, it might be the reason, but that's that's kind of fascinates me a little bit. Um, I see there are several here that are traditional kind of A through F uh, way. I see some about uh, the, the way that teachers uh, uh, get to a grade varies widely among teachers. It doesn't really matter how they get there, but everyone gets to a letter grade is kind of what I'm seeing on a few of these. Um, so it's interesting. Ooh, there's a quote. The intent is to measure whether a student currently, where a student currently stands in mastering a long-term target. Many of our classes use a standards-based grading process. Gotcha. Great. It's not posted anywhere. Great. So that's telling also, like how many clicks in to the district website is our purpose of grading if there is one? And if there's not one, what is that saying, right? Um, yeah, super interesting. Someone re from Redmond School District posted their, their actual range for, uh, looks like they're doing some standards-based grading just based on the, the range there uh, for an A, a B, a C, et cetera. Okay, excellent. So thinking about slide three now, think about the practices you see in your school, slide one, and think about whether they support or undermine this purpose, slide two. So think about the practices you put on slide one, think about the purpose that you've summarized or you know, could, couldn't find maybe on slide two. Um, can you reflect on that, the kind of the, the crossing over of those two things. Can you reflect on that on slide three? I'm gonna change the title here. It doesn't, it doesn't quite match what we're doing. Um, There we go.
Hey, Christy, could you restate the question on slide three? Like, I guess I'm not totally sure what that prompt means. Like, Absolutely. how do paths relate to our district's idea? Absolutely. And I just want to make sure everyone can see, uh, I am screen sharing currently the Jamboard slide three. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. I just don't. True? Okay. I just okay, don't get the, how student paths relate. Totally. To totally. So by student paths, this is what I'm talking about, the activities or aspects of your, of oh, your okay. school. So one of these paths here, whether that be jobs, sports, athletics, um, tracking, self-worth, one of those categories, maybe that's a better way to say it, and thinking about how does that mesh with your district's current grading policy, if you were able to find it. Like, do they do they go hand in hand? The answer could very well be yes, right? As someone said here, uh, GPA needed for college and sports teams, hence a letter grade. So one pathway or one grouping for, um, the ways that grades impact students are whether they can play sports or not. That seems to go hand in hand with this person's um, district's policy on grades because in order to play sports, we need to have a letter grade. And so those go together. That's kind of what I'm looking for on slide three. How does slide one and slide two relate or not relate? Okay, that makes Thanks sense. Thanks for asking. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It, and if it's not coming to you right away, um, I, I would say I'm not, I'm not surprised uh, also because it, it's kind of a, it's a big question, right? We, we, we seem to do grades for a lot of reasons, hence all the things on slide one or all of the things that are at least are impacted by our grades. Um, and then trying to make sense of those reasons. And then maybe my district doesn't even have, seem to have a policy on grading or why we grade. And how, how am I supposed to make sense of that, right? I could see you struggling with that. Like, how do I make sense of that? Maybe, maybe you can't make sense of it, right? Maybe it doesn't connect. Um, you know, what's interesting is I haven't really seen anything on here yet about college. And I was kind of expecting to see stuff about that because a lot of the things I hear are, well, we have to do letter grades because that's what colleges expect. And we are, it's, it's almost like the implied subtext there is we are in the business of getting kids ready for college. Like that's what we do, right? So that's one that I, I see for slide three, right? Is when we do grades and our jobs to get ready, kids ready for college. And so, those match, those go together, right? So um, I guess my point is, if you're if you're having a hard time with slide three, that's all right, because it's a big question. I think it really takes some some thinking through of what are the things that we do that are connected to kids and their grades, and how do we feel as a district about grading? Well, I don't know. My district doesn't even say how we feel, or you know. Teachers feel different ways, maybe. Teachers see different purposes for grades. And we don't have a collective district idea of that. So that's okay if you're if you're not seeing it. There's a lot of, there are a lot of good things here. I see a lot about sports and being able to play um, and maybe in college. Uh, I saw one here that was like the the electronic grade book uh, just, just does a zero to 100 scale. Like that's what we use, right? So therefore, you know, that's that's why we do grades. So a lot of good stuff here. And the idea is here just to kind of get you get you thinking about it. All right. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take this information. 
um, from slides one, two, and three. And in your group, same group that we've been working in all day today, uh, in your group, I want you to come up with a clear purpose for grading based on what you had on slide one and slide two and slide three. And I know you're, you're have different things, right? So collectively, based on what you guys wrote, can you come up with a clear purpose statement for grading? And, and this is, it's not, this is not a, an exercise in semantics, right? It's, it's actually really important to think about why do we grade children? Why do we give them marks and what do we expect to do with those marks what do we expect th them to do with those marks and what do those marks mean for them after they leave my classroom Wh whatever that looks like right it actually if you have a clear purpose of statement for grading it informs your own practices in your classroom and so sometimes people get bogged down on the, you know, oh, this is an exercise in, in putting some words down. But I, I do want you, want you to actually engage in this conversation because it is a big one. And if your district gets to a point where they want to craft out a purpose of grading, it actually takes a lot of conversation to do that because people have very different ideas about what that looks like. And you have to come, you have to figure out what your understandings are and your beliefs about grades in order to come together to reach somewhat of a consensus on what do we believe as a district, right? So just in our small group, let's see if we can come up with a purpose for grading statement. I'm going to give you uh, about 10 minutes to do this. And when, you, um, when you're when you done, I'd like one person in your group to come to this slide and to type it in here so that we can all read it and see it. Okay. So that, that's what we're doing. We're looking at our information from the three Jamboard slides. We're going to craft a purpose for a statement for grading, and then we're going to add it to this slide. All right. Clarifying questions. All right, thumbs up, love that. Let's go back to our breakout rooms. And uh, I, I hope that you noted what room you're in, just in case my breakout room thing doesn't work here. So let's see if it does. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click open all rooms, ready? Is there an invitation to join? Yes, Woo. it's my win for the day. See you back here in about 10 minutes. Just a, just a couple of minutes left. Nothing like taking it to the very end. It's my motto here. Um, all right, so there's uh, lots of good stuff here to dig into. That's where we're gonna begin next time is taking a closer look at what you've written. Um, please know districts take sometimes months to have these conversations to come up with what's their purpose of grading. And I asked you to do it in less than 10 minutes. So um, it, they will be rough and that's right where they should be, right? That's where we're, that's where we're gonna pick up next time. So uh, just really quickly, when we're talking about equitable grading practices, this is from Joe Feldman, our, our practices should really fall uh, under these three pillars here. Um, they should be, our practices should be motivational, we should be lifting kids up and motivating them intrinsically. Um, bias resistant, they, uh, our, our grading of kids should not be based on our implicit biases um, about students. And they should be sound and clear and transparent. The way we're arriving at grades is not a mystery, should not be a mystery. It should be really clear and very, um, thoroughly discussed with students and families, it's not a mystery, right? When we look at the foundations of equitable grading, again, this comes from Joe Feldman, all of these things came up tonight in our conversations, either in our discussions or what we wrote on slides. Every single one of these things came up, which is awesome. I love to see that. And we haven't even started digging into these yet, right? So we're off to a great start. Um, 
I'm speaking about specifically about this book right here. If you haven't read this or don't have a copy, highly recommend uh, picking up a copy of this. He just came out with his next edition of, uh, of the book. So um, it's a great resource. I look at it often. Um, there's a couple others here. There's a great one by Ken O'Connor. Uh, he is uh, a big name in standards-based grading. Um, and then just for variety, so it's not always text, we do have something to listen to. If you are uh, thinking about continuing, uh, wanting to continue to think about it over the next month. Um, okay, here's where I wanted to get to. So next time we are meeting on the 26th, same time, same Zoom link. And we are also committed to sending out a reminder email probably the day before our meeting. It will have the correct link in it, just a reminder. Don't forget to look at the homework if you haven't already. Here's the homework for next time. There's a document right here that contains four purposes of grading from four different sources. How do they compare to your purpose of grading? Are there any changes you would make to your statement after reading these? And then there's an article, uh, I'm not seeing the link to the article, I'm gonna fix that, on ungrading. Ungrading is a relatively new-ish idea in the land of grading, um, but it's gaining momentum, interestingly. So um, I apologize, the link is not here, but um, I will add it. Uh, how does ungrading, what do you think about ungrading after you read this? How does it relate to um, purpose of grading? Um, and then finally, before you leave today, if you could please fill out this exit ticket, that gives us some good feedback about how it went, how it can be better. Um, I, you know, number one is like, Chrissy, get the right link for us. That seems like a high priority item, uh, but really, um, the flow, the sequence, the what should we keep doing and what could be better? Appreciate your feedback. Appreciate that you're here tonight after a long day at school. Appreciate you engaging uh, in these conversations. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Yeah.